Everyone seems to be surprised that I have fewer shoes than how many shoes they think I should have, and I still think that I have way too many pairs of shoes, as many of you will probably agree. Some of these shoes I'm going to have more to say about than others, and some I may have absolutely nothing to say. The key thing here is if it's on the shoe rack, it means it's part of the collection, and if it's not here, it's because I don't have it anymore. Some of the final honorable mentions that don't even get a shelf, they're just stuck up top. Two pairs from Crown Northampton, color eight, Everton, and a uh, bourbon, uh, whatever this one's called, I forget, Harleston. Everton, Harleston. If you guys are interested in finding out more about how I put together or came up with the design for that bookcase full of shoes, stay tuned for a future video. Let's get into all the shoes. This is the uh, Capri Centurion from Antonio Meccariello. This is in a navy full reverse luxury calf, like all those uh, fancy words with a hand-stitched rubber outsole. Just a super comfortable summer uh, casual shoe. Love this thing. This is one of my first pairs of color four shell Cordovan. This is a Zeb hole cut slip on. And uh, I wear this shoe much more than I may let on or show because I don't really talk about this shoe that much. But this is just extremely comfortable and is kind of like my go-to pair if I just need to just grab something, throw it on and run out for an errand. Now that I have that pair of Belgian loafers from Acme though, this may be getting replaced in that number one spot, but I don't know. Sometimes Shell Quarterman just like, it pulls me in. Let's start with this one, which is actually the newest. And it's the one that I was just kind of brushing up on the desk as we got started. This is a Belgian loafer from Acme Shoemaker. It's a combination of shark leather and kudu leather. It's actually a cemented construction, but it's just really supposed to be a super casual, relaxed, easy wearing shoe. And that's exactly what it is. Might as well continue working our way up the bookcase full of shoes. This is a penny lover in peccary leather from Antonio Meccariello. This is a combination of like the, uh, the famous like Centurion split toe derby as well as the Valeris penny loafer from Antonio. So it's got a pie crust apron. Just absolutely love the texture, the shade of brown on these and wish I would actually get a chance to wear them more. And I definitely should now that I've gotten them stretched out right on the instep so that it's a much more comfortable fit. Staying on the theme of classics, this is the Crockett and Jones Harvard, which is an unlined penny loafer and whiskey shell cordovan. Not much else to say. Continuing on the shell cordovan penny loafers, this is the Acme Color 6 full strap penny loafer. This is my favorite loafer. That's it. Yep, favorite loafer. It should go it yeah. If I couldn't say that enough, I would say it more. And I don't even know what that means. But this is a whole cut tassel loafer with some fall stitch details around this top line. Couldn't speak more highly of Lee from uh, Ichigo Ichie. And I enjoy working with Lee and I enjoy his shoes almost as much as I enjoy pronouncing the name of his shoemaking firm, which is Ichigo Ichie. This is the Centurion. One sec. So for those that were not as familiar with it, when I mentioned this is a combination of a penny loafer and the Centurion model that Antonio is known for, this is what I meant. You can see right there, it's got that pie crust apron and that's exactly what you're seeing on this penny loafer as well. That was a, one of the custom design elements that Antonio and I came up with and that's why both of these shoes are pretty special. Actually, the reason that this is pretty special is because I bought this from Mr. Renworks, uh, who's a very good friend. This is the Floorsheim Imperial. I don't really have to introduce this shoe that much to to most folks out there but this is like the uh, the staple made in america quality shoe this is from 1963 so it's 61 years old i just got these a few weeks ago when i restored them using the brand new shell cordovan cream from pure polish products that's a shell cordovan product that andy the owner of pure polish products and i came up with and kind of like co-developed over the last couple of years absolutely love that stuff not just because I came up with it, because I honestly think it's just the best absolute product that you could use to care for your shell quarter. Of course, besides an ebony stick, but separate topic. Forsheim Imperial. This is Bridland Shoemaker's Long Wing Derby in Shinky Shell Cordovan. I just did a side-by-side -side comparison or just kind of a rambling on my thoughts about different types of shell cordovan. I'll put that video over here or over here, wherever it goes. Feel free to dive into that after this video, but Shinky Shell Cordovan, Long Wing Blulcher, Fantastic color. It's only fitting now to move into TLB Mallorca's Ricardo Shell Cordovan. This one is kind of a love and hate situation where I absolutely like love everything about the shoes. I just don't really like the Ricardo Shell Cordovan. Might as well stay in the TLB Artista family, Black Cap Toe Oxford. 
This was actually gifted to me by a friend, and I absolutely love it. The first pair that I had in the Artista line, even though I don't get a chance to wear a black cap to Oxford all that much, whenever I do, I, I definitely do enjoy this pair, and I think it's just that perfect, kind of like classic, much more refined replacement of the Strand from Allen Edmonds. This is from Helen Shoemaker or Blazing Wonders, as they're more commonly referred to, maybe on Instagram, maybe not, maybe I just made that up, but this is a full made-to-measure shoe, sweeping double monk strap, fantastic shoe, and I really enjoy having it in my collection, even if it's something that is very narrowly used in that kind of like niche use case. It feels kind of funny to say that this $1,000 shoe is a great entry-level handmade shoe, but this is from the Acme Marvel collection. I honestly think this is like pound for pound the best designed shoe around that $1,000 price point. It doesn't have the blind welded waist or some of those, you know, trendier details today, but if you're just looking for the best possible shoe, this will beat out a $700 shoe that has a blind welded waist and all of those fancy like marketing details, this is going to be much better than that. So now we're starting to get into the, the upper echelon of the shelves of the bookcase full of shoes. This is actually one of the very first pairs of shoes that I had from Antonio Meccariello and I bought this pre-owned on Styleform, if you can believe that. The Lucius model in a Lantra Patina, on the chisel to last just every like core essential epitome like detail of antonio meccariello is in this shoe and i absolutely love it this is a pair from acme shoemaker this is in dark cognac shell cordovan dark cognac hatch grain embossed shell cordovan but it's got a kind of special fancy double braided apron overall very well balanced style aesthetic and pattern going on that i just couldn't resist absolutely love this one of those shoes that i you know love wearing it but sometimes i just really love admiring just the work of art that it is this is like my row of soft square pairs of shoes from acme all of these are on the same list which is the n83 this is a five island plain to derby as you can clearly see this is an armanac shell cordovan i believe maybe it's mahogany get them confused it doesn't really matter i love them both yeah, that's it. I love them both. So this is the one that started my love affair with the Lazy Man shoe. You can see I've got the, the whole cut Lazy Man from Joe Works. Uh, this is Natural Shell Cordovan. Really love this shoe a lot. Maybe it's just like a common theme that you're going to hear that I don't get to wear as many of these shoes as often I was like, and I don't know if that's because of how many shoes that I have or just because of the work environment that I'm in combined with having a young family and just not really running around in dress shoes as going out with, uh, you know, twin one and a half year olds. But... If it's all the same, I still love this shoe just as much as I did when I would maybe wear it once a week. I'm about to undermine myself here, but Joe Works is one of the best Goodyear welded shoemakers under $1,000. That's all I'm going to say. Fantastic shoes. We're going to save this one for last. Ravello Algonquin or V-Tip uh, Alden. I know I've gotten like just reamed out in the comments by folks who think I'm a complete idiot for saying Algonquin or Algonquin, Algonquin. None of those are how you pronounce it, but just to kind of really like trigger those folks in the comments again, we're going to go with the Algonquin. Is that what it's called? Again, as I just mentioned, this is a three eyelet Chukka from Acme. This is either Mahogany or Armanac, and this is either Mahogany and Armanac. Whichever one this is, that one isn't. Yes. Here's a whole cut Chelsea boot from Acme Shoemaker. This is in the dark cognac Hormine hatch grain. And uh, there's just not much to say about this that the shoe doesn't say itself. I'll link the video over here where I unboxed this or reviewed it. It's too long ago to remember, but I'm sure I made a video about it at some point. This is a very interesting shoemaker that I'm surprised I haven't heard more about. This is Tread Heavily, who works with Fukushin, uh, kind of partners in offering made to order, made to measure shoes. Uh, located in the United States, made in Vietnam, Corbin hatch grain leather, just a fantastic design, fantastic like last and executed really well. Just solid, solid construction. Antonio Meccariello's Proteo boot, which is as much of a piece of art as it is a rugged and like fully functional boot. I know many people wouldn't kind of wear this thing out in the snow or the rain or kind of the elements, but as you can see by the rugged commando sole, that's exactly what this thing is intended for. And that's what I pretty much use it for. I can definitely say that this is a shoe that I really enjoy wearing as, as much as people think that it's really uncomfortable to wear. It's one of the most comfortable boots that I have. The engineer boots. This is the clinch engineer boot. Uh, kind of like, yeah. 
a bit anticlimactic there, but this is a brown overdyed horse butt clinch engineer boot, 11 inches tall, the CN narrow last, if I'm not mistaken. And I kind of know the details about this one and the one we're about to talk about better than some of the shoes that I've had longer, probably because I had a bit of a healthy obsession with engineer boots before I had the opportunity to acquire this one off of eBay. And then this one directly from Brian, the bootmaker. So this is, so this is a pair of roll club engineer boots in an Italian brown horse butt leather. This is from one of his like recent uh, limited releases of kind of like stock made to order handmade engineer boots. Normally all of it is made to order, but I think he's kind of been making more batches as of late. And if I could give anyone a piece of advice, if they're, if you guys are ever interested in a pair from roll club, I would definitely snatch them up when he's got your size available. Everything that I kind of wanted this boot to be when I paid whatever the price was of them, uh, it's that and more. Now that I have two of the best engineer boots that are out there, this one just hands down really kind of like delivers what, what is most important to me about an engineer boot and that's just loving it. All right, I know I said I was coming back to this. Surprisingly, I forgot. And the reason that it's surprising is because it's my favorite pair of shoes. This is the Color 6 Acme Shoemaker Fall Wingtip Derby Boot. Now I know that's a lot. Let me unpack some of those like kind of detail by detail as to like why this is my favorite pair of shoes. Let's start with the color. Color six shell cordovan, in my opinion, is the most versatile and it's my favorite color of shell cordovan. You know, you got Ravello, whiskey, natural, bourbon, mahogany, oak wood, all these colors that you can make up. Some of the lighter colors are just a bit too vibrant and bold on your foot to wear with, you know, more formal dress slacks as well as denim. Some of the darker colors, shell cordovan, like color eight, are just a bit too dark to actually like appreciate the color. Color six. I'll say it's my opinion, but I think it's just fact, is the perfect balance on that spectrum of like versatility, as well as being light enough to appreciate the color without it being too overwhelming and too bold, kind of like in your face when you wear it. Now the shoe lover in me just is in, uh, is in love with the details and the level of technicality that's required to execute this really well. A classic wingtip is gonna have multiple pattern pieces that are stitched on top of each other or into each other to create that wingtip. The fall wing tip, on the other hand, has, you know, just this single layer of leather and it, the details just stitched in to create that wing tip aesthetic. Overall, like, you know, they both perform the same. There's both shoes, but I think this pattern just is a little more elegant, a little more refined, has a sleeker silhouette. The, uh, you know, wearability of this is at the top. This is going to fit in perfectly and it already has and I couldn't enjoy wearing it more than I do. And yeah, I mean, that's about it. I know it's not that many pairs of shoes. That's what I keep telling myself. And then I look at them and I realize that it's way too many pairs of shoes. But if I'm honest, uh, I've got a few more pairs over there, but the reason that they're over there and not on the bookcase full of shoes, I don't like to collect shoes that collect dust. I like to collect shoes that I just genuinely have a passion for either like the craftsmanship and the story behind them or the fact that I just love wearing them. And if they don't fall into either one of those two categories, they fall into the category that's over there, which is they're not here anymore. Let me know what you guys think about the size of the collection, just about the overall versatility, variety. I don't know. If you guys have any cool comments, love to hear them. If you have any questions, happy to answer them and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.